my fellow Singaporeans, when you go to the polls this Saturday, you will be electing the next president. Hopefully, with your support, he will be Mr. Tan Ji Se. You will not be getting a figurehead, but someone who is willing to exercise the powers given to him. Some people have come out and say, you know, the president cannot do this, the president cannot do that. They make it seem as if the president cannot do much except to listen to the cabinet. Now, the president is not that weak. He is elected by you. So what he cannot do as a president, he can still be your representative, he can still listen to you, and if need be, express your concerns. There may be legal constraints on what the president can or cannot do. GSA understands all that and will work closely with the government to make sure that this is a better country for all of us. But that does not mean he's just going to be a rubber stamp. It is most absurd that an elected president should be denied the right to think and express opinions as other citizens and be disallowed to have his conscience to guide him. The Istana is not a five-star restriction camp. When you elect the president, we empower him. We expect him to make sure we and our children do not suffer from the mismanagement of our money in the reserves and the CPF. The elected president, therefore, is not just a ceremonial role. We do not pay him humongous salary just to go around cutting ribbons, shaking hands, And of course, kissing babies. Huh? Now, he is the soul of the nation. So we want him to feel concerns of the people who elected him and to be watchful over the direction that the country is heading. If the president does only what the cabinet tells him, then G say would just be a very highly paid puppet. Do you want that? No. Then we might as well not have an election and get a cheaper puppet by other means. Now, we, the people of Singapore, are the supreme body of this country. In this election, we cannot change the constitutional duties of the president. But we can, by our choice, by electing someone for what he stands for, do determine the scope of his moral obligations. It is his moral duty to see that all our citizens are treated fairly and the country united and peaceful. When this post was created, the intent of Parliament was very clear. It was to prevent any future rogue government from raiding the reserves, from appointing their unqualified friends to the top position in the civil service, and also covering up when there's corruption. It is to give the President the power of checks and balances. 
So my friend, when we vote for Jise, this is the duty that is expected of him. In fact, if he does nothing, he just keep quiet, then he's shirking his responsibility. Because of this heavy legal and moral responsibilities, we not only need a man who has good knowledge of the economy to protect your money in the reserves and CPF, but also someone who possesses the courage, the impartiality, the conscience, and the moral strength to do the job. Now, first of all, to be impartial and independent, the president must be free from any emotional attachment to the party that is supposed to watch over. Otherwise, how is he going to check? GSA is therefore the most ideal candidate to provide the checks and balances to make sure the government does not cross the line. He has no affiliation to the ruling party, so would not have any emotional attachment to be shy about pointing out what is wrong. Now, secondly, a president needs a certain amount of courage to do the job without fear or favour. He needs to be strong enough so as to not to waver in face of tremendous pressure, especially when he has to face an unconscionable cabinet should one appear. There is no doubt that Jise has a lot of courage. He is the first high-ranking scholar civil servant to come out and fight a general election on an opposition ticket in May this year. In Singapore, you need to be very brave to do that. Now, questions have been asked. Why did he suddenly burst onto the political scene? I know Chise very well. All along, he had wanted to come out and serve the people of Singapore. But for many years, he had to take care of his aged mother. And he has, put, he has to put his heart to serve the nation on hold until she died early this year at the age of 100. Therefore, my fellow Singaporeans, when you vote for Tanji Se, you'll be voting for someone with both a heart for his mother and the nation. You will also be voting for someone with vast experience in international economics and global finance. He managed funds in the hundreds of millions of dollars and has a good grasp of money. I spent one afternoon sipping coffee with Jise, and he showed me how money went into the reserves. He was like an expert financial plumber. He showed me the intricate routes to which our money flowed in and out and circulated all over the place. By the time I finished the coffee, I was convinced he's the right man to make sure your money and your children's money will be safe. Now, Jise is a man with a strong sense of justice and social concern. When he sees a wrong, he will not keep quiet. He has a view and does not sit on the fence just to be politically correct. His moral values are clear. His objections to the casino, the mandatory death sentence, and the ISA shows this. His views on education system, the high cost of health care, the need for minimum wage for the poor, and the widening income gap show his concern for the poor, the sick, and the low income group. It is this heart for the people that drives him to take part in elections and to speak up for the old, the underprivileged, the weak, the vulnerable and the less educated. 
Jisei is someone who has a lot of empathy for the common man. This is what we need in a president. He has pledged to donate the bulk of his salary to worthy causes should he be elected. Jisei is a simple and frugal man. He lives modestly and feels he does not need such a huge salary. If you know him, you know that he's a very sincere person. And when he says he donates, it comes from the bottom of his heart. By this gesture alone, he shows all Singaporeans the meaning of sacrifice. He sets the example of what real public service is and what service to self before self means. This is a type of heart we need for the nation. So, let us put our hearts together and beat as one on polling day. We know we will not be getting a rubber stamp president. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Long.